What up guys, this is Paul. I got a fun video for you guys today. I'm at Bally's 1-3 match the stack. I actually get stuck in Blackhawk for like 13 hours because of road closures. So the game got kind of crazy as the night went on. So yeah, I hope you, uh, I hope you guys enjoy. So the first two cards that are dealt to me are a couple of distinguished gentlemen. Always a pleasure to see these guys. I raise things up in early position and I get four callers. So some classic multi-way shenanigans here at Bally's. Pretty much expected, but the flop comes okay for me. It's the six of hearts, four of clubs, two of clubs. Obviously going five ways, I could be up against a lot of different types of hands. Some that have me destroyed, some flop straights, some flush draws, but I still have an overpair. I have kings, so I bet out for $25 or about one third pot. Pretty small here, see where I'm at, but at the same time, I'm multi-way and generally you wanna be betting smaller. I get two folds and two calls. So with about $150 in the pot, we see the most magical turn card in the deck. It's an offsuit king. Turning a set is always a nice feeling, and I decide to bet once again for 65 this time. Still a little bit small, but I assume I'm either way ahead of most hands or very behind against straights that I'll likely be getting raised here by those type of hands right now. Unfortunately though, we don't get raised, we don't get calls, everybody folds, no more money is put in this pot, but we lock this one up, we win the first hand that is dealt to us on the day, Definitely a good omen for things to come. So omen or not, I am feeling particularly punty today. This one is especially bad. I looked down at ace nine and over limp in early position. Not really sure what I was doing here. I think I should just be folding this 100% of the time. Middle position blind raises it up to $20 and four people call. I definitely think I should be squeezing here and putting in a three bet, especially against a blind raise and everybody has capped ranges because of the just calls. But I end up just making the call and uh, I think that's probably okay, but probably bad. I should have just folded in general. Pot is about a hundred bucks and we see a flop of ace, king, four, rainbow. So a flopping top pair is not bad. I check and the initial blind raiser makes it $60 and I'm honestly not sure if he was looking at his cards at this point or not. Pretty large bet. He's been c-betting large all night with about any two cards. Calls around to me and I come up with the magical idea that I missed my spot earlier pre-flop. I might as well just jam it in now. All in. So I go all in for about 350 to about $400. So I'm over betting the pot here with a bad ace. Might be a little bit of an overplay. Either way, the initial better snap folds. Snap folds around to the last guy. He ends up tank calling. Rolls over ace four for two pairs. So we're in pretty bad shape. Honestly, I'd rather be lucky than good because the turn is a brick and the river is the oh so sweet. I'm just kidding. It's a brick. I'm not lucky and I'm not good. So I end up losing this 1000 $80 pot. Um, so things definitely taking a turn for the worse here. So the guy who just beat me in this hand is a funny guy. He wanted to be in the video and let me know that he destroyed me and wanted to let all you guys know. So I'll let you guys see that. Easy money, easy money. I come here, I win money, I leave, that's it. So obviously not feeling great after that one, but I rebuy and I am dealt ace king offsuit. So hopefully I can turn things around with this one. Action starts with a very crazy player who is literally trying to donate chips to everyone at the table, yet somehow is winning every single hand. It was pretty incredible to see. He opened raises to $23 in the cutoff. I am next to act on the button, and I have a pretty easy three bet here. I decide to make it $100 to go. Folds around to him, and he doesn't think too long before making the call. Flop comes queen of hearts, jack of hearts, three of spades. So should be better for my range. I make a $75 C-bet here, about one-third pot. He makes the quick call. The turn is the five of spades. I don't improve. It brings another flush draw on the board. He checks to me once again, and this time I just check it back. I'm pretty much giving up on this board unless I see an ace or a king on the river, uh, especially because this guy is a calling station, and I think he could easily call me with a three, a jack, small pocket pairs that he has. So when the river comes a six of diamonds, both draws brick out and now the villain leads out for $300 into a pot of about 350. I tank because I honestly really do want to call this guy so bad. He has shown so many bluffs in similar positions as this. I showed a ton of weakness by checking back the turn and it's obvious that he could be trying to take advantage of this. He also could just be blasting out with any sort of missed draw here. At the end of the day though, I am losing to some of his bluffs and there's better spots for me out there. So I make a sad fold. And when I do fold, he snap shows king 10 offsuit. I was correct in my analysis, but I couldn't make the call. I get absolutely destroyed by this guy and it feels really bad. So at this point, it is about 1 a.m. and I start racking up my chips. I'm tired, I'm tilted. I think it's time for me to go home. But then the floor comes and tells the entire poker room that all the roads are closed because it's been dumping snow outside and there's a bunch of car crashes out there or something. I hope everyone's okay, by the way. So great, I'm stuck in the casino for the next four to five hours. 
I'm not just gonna sit around and do nothing. I take my chips out of my rack. I accept my fate. I'm gonna be playing poker till the sun comes up. This one starts off with a global elite player who I've played with a couple of times, pulling up and asking to be in the vlog mid-hand. What up? Hey. Big fan. Nice. Just in time. <laughs> For the actual hand itself, I'm playing queen 10 offsuit and I am in the under the gun position. I don't recommend it, but I raise it up. I make it $15 to go and we get three callers. Going four ways to the flop that is slightly above average, we see ace, king, jack, rainbow. I have the absolute mega nuts and I elect to get a little trappy and check. Checks around to the button who is a very tight player um, and she ends up betting $30. So thankfully someone bets. I just call and everybody else folds. I assume she flopped two pair or better or else I don't think she would be leading out at all. Turn is the six of clubs bringing in a flush draw, but I'm not too worried about it. I check again, praying for a double barrel and she does just that. She bets $50. I probably could go for a raise here, but I opt on just a call because I really think she might have it in her to fold a absolutely great hand like two pair. The pot is about 220 and the river is another six. So the board pairs and she definitely could have a set but uh, pretty unlikely. I check one more time, praying that she bets out and she does not disappoint. She bets out for $75. She only has about $150 left in her stack. So after a moment or two of thinking, I put it all in. She tanks for a while, so now I know I'm pretty much good to go. I'm just rooting for a call at this point. And she does end up making the call and we insta show, I win this $670 pot and we are clawing back into green. So we're clawing back slowly but surely. At this point, it's like 4 a.m. and I did not film this hand. Um, I only have the notes for it. I'm still stuck in Blackhawk at this point. I could really use two strong men to help dig me out of this massive hole I made for myself. So when I look down at pocket K holes, it is exactly what I need. And I raise it up to 25 bucks over a $6 straddle. Again, three people make the call. So with $100 in the middle, the flop comes king nine nine. So you could say it's a good one for me. I actually realized the reason I was losing earlier is because I forgot that I wasn't flopping the nuts. I recommend you guys try this strategy at your own games. It really works for me. I C bet small for about 35 bucks and only get one caller. Pot is about $170 and the turn is a six. I bet out small again, just praying for a call. I bet $65 and to music to my ears, I see a $160 raise from this guy. What an epic moment for me. I debate on just calling or getting it in now, but I figured if he has a nine, he's probably never folding. So I just jam it all in for about 500 more dollars. He is not happy, but he ends up making the call. River is a blank and he shows ace nine for flop trips, but my boat is gonna take it down and I win this one. $1,170 pot. We're even on the night. Let's freaking go. So for this next one, I kind of want to just set the scene. It is about 6.30 a.m. and it is bright outside. I'm still in Blackhawk. The roads are just now opening. I tell the table I'm going to play one last orbit. I'm down about $100, $200. I have $1,400 ish in my stack. I'm really ready to get out of here, but this game was so good. People were straddling for $100, $50, $25. The game was playing massive. Everyone was deep stacked. I had a normal size stack with 1400. People had me covered. It was pretty crazy. Um, lots of gambling was going on. Um, so like I said, it was my last orbit. And then I looked down at a funny one. I looked down at Jack nine suited on the button. There's a $10 straddle on and someone raises it to $25. Pretty small for this game, I'm not gonna lie. Three people call, including myself. So with $100 in the middle, we're going four ways to a flop of Queen of clubs, 10 of clubs, and a six of spades. I flop open-ended, which is pretty epic for me, but the early position player ends up betting out for $80. So pretty large bet, um, folds around to me. I'm happy to just call here and see another card. Pot is about $260 and the turn is the gin card for me. It's an off suit king. I now have the second nuts. This guy leads into me now for $175. Now I have a decision here. Do I wanna just call or raise? I have about a thousand ish in my stack. So I think in hopes of getting all the money in, I probably need to raise right now. I raise it up to $500, leaving myself about 500 behind. The villain, a very cool dude, by the way, and I'm honestly not sure if this is the correct action. My notes were uh, pretty shitty. I'll let you see those right now. He jams all in. He has me covered. If he has ace jack, it's a sick cooler, but I can't fold. Um, I'm pretty happy about this spot. I make the call. 
He announces king, queen, and before I can even process how amazing of a spot this is, the river is a king. This dude fills up on the river and I lose the biggest pot I have ever played. Honestly, I'm stunned in the moment and I sit in that chair for about 10 minutes in utter disbelief. I'm in physical pain from this one. Think about this, it's 6.30 in the morning. I've been battling to get my money back all night just to lose this fashion. I win this one nine times out of 10. This was a $2,800 pot, the sickest and biggest pot of my life. Roads are officially open though, so after that one, I just get in my car, the sun's out, the mountain is beautifully blanketed in snow. This one hurts, but um, you know, next nine times that I'm in this spot, I should win it, so excited for that. What is up guys? I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, obviously not the best result in the world. I was in for $1,600 out for a whopping $0. So didn't even get to go to the cage. Pretty unfortunate result. It's funny, last video's outro, I think I said that I don't film enough losses. So um, here's a big one for you guys. Hope you guys can at least enjoy that one. As you know, I probably didn't. Um, yeah, I was stuck in Blackhawk for a while. Definitely not ideal, especially because I wanted to leave like halfway through that session. Um, pretty swingy session. I got back to even at about 6.30 in the morning and then I played that um, $2,800 pot that you guys saw. Biggest pot I've ever played and lost and I got it in so good. So pretty unfortunate outcome, but it is what it is. Um, been playing a lot more hours recently. So definitely been swinging a lot more and seeing a lot more variance, um, especially because I've been playing a little bigger as well sometimes. Um, I plan on playing a lot more and making more videos in the future here. So Look out for those. Hopefully next week or the week after I'll have a video for you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys waiting on this one. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I, as always, I appreciate you guys. Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know uh, what you guys think.